Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozorg and this is Abacus Tutorial 2B Property Module from Beginning to Advance. How to ask your video related questions. Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. This is the table of content. I will talk about how to assign property to beam elements, how to render beam shell parts, how to assign property to shell elements, what is the difference between the section points and the integration points, what is the effect of the shell offset in the shell section definition, and finally, procedures of defining shell part in Abacus. Now I want to talk about assigning property to beam elements. In the previous tutorial, I defined the appropriate material. In the second step, I must define the appropriate profile. In the third step, I must define the beam section. In the fourth step, I must assign beam section and finally, I must assign beam orientation. As you can see, this is the sketch of the cross section of solid part. And we must define the profile of the beam elements according to this sketch. Here, I select the eye profile and then I enter the geometric properties of this profile according to this sketch because we want uh, to simulate a similar geometry as a wire part. Now I go to Abacus to define this eye profile. I click on create profile, I select eye, I continue and I enter the values. and I select I-beam wire. I go back to the slides. In the next step, I must define the section. I set the category to beam and I select beam. Actually, both of the beams and trusses must be defined as wire parts in the part module and then for defining their sections, the category must be set to beam. But if you want to have a wire part as a truss, here, you must select the truss for the type. Then, we must select the defined profile and the defined material. Here, we must select the section integration procedure. I have set it to during analysis. By setting the section integration to during analysis, the nonlinear simulations will be more accurate. And finally, we must assign it to the wire part. I go to Abacus to perform these steps. I click on create section. I set the category to beam and type to beam and I name it beam section. I select the profile and the material and Section integration must be during analysis and I click on OK. Then I click on assign section. I deselect this option and I select the part and I assign it to the part. And as you can see, its color is changed. The final step is defining normal directions for the wire part. In this picture, as you can see, there are two vectors, vector 1 and vector 2. These vectors are perpendicular to the tangential direction of the wire part. We call them first normal direction and second normal direction. In this picture, you can see them. This is the tangential direction. 
This is the first normal direction and this is the second normal direction. Abacus determines the tangential direction itself. Next, we must determine the first normal direction. Finally, the second normal direction is equal to the cross product of the tangential direction and the first normal direction. N2 is equal to the cross product of T and N1. I go to Abacus to define the normal direction. I click on Assign Beam Orientation. I select the wire part. And as you can see, this is the tangential direction. And Abacus has determined it itself. And here Abacus suggests the N1 direction. I click on Enter. And as you can see, the N2 direction is equal to the cross product of T and N1. According to what we enter for first normal direction, Abacus determines the second normal direction. And I click on OK. And I click on Escape and I go back to the slide. By rendering the beam or shell part, we can graphically check that the sections are defined correctly or not. From the part display options, by activating render beam profiles, you can see the solid representation of the wire part. And the wire part will be illustrated with the assigned property. And as you can see here, we have the eye profile. And this representation is similar to the solid part. I go to Abacus to show you the solid representation. I go to View, Part Display Options, and I click on Render Beam Profiles. This is the eye profile. Now I want to talk about shell elements and assigning property to them. This is a quadrilateral shell element and this is a triangular shell element. And all of the shell elements have a normal vector. This is the normal vector. And according to the direction of the normal vector, these elements have a positive phase and a negative phase. And here you can see that according to the direction of the normal vector, this is the positive surface and this is the negative surface. And this construction line is the mid surface of the shell part or shell element. This is the positive face of this region and this is the negative face of this region. Now I want to create the shell section. I set the category to shell and I choose homogeneous. Then I must select the material and I must enter the shell thickness value that is 10 millimeters. I set the section integration to during analysis. Like the beam elements, by setting the section integration to during analysis, the nonlinear simulations will be more accurate. And here I must choose the thickness integration rule and the number of integration points. Uh, actually, the Simpson integration rule is accurate enough and the numerical integration accuracy will increase by increasing the number of section points. However, in most of cases, five section points are sufficient. I go to Abacus to perform these steps. I select shell part from here. I click on Create section, I name it shell section, I choose shell from category and I choose homogeneous, I select the material and I enter the value of shell thickness. Now I want to talk about the difference between the section points and the integration points. This is a first order quadrilateral shell element with reduced integration. Actually, this element has four nodes with one integration point. So its name is S4R. And these are five section points according to this setting. And this is the integration point 
according to the reduced integration. If this element is not reduced integration, so its name is S4 element and it has four integration points in these positions. And section points and integration points are two different concepts. Unfortunately, in the Abacus documentation and even in Abacus CAE, sometimes those terms are used interchangeably, confusing the reader. Like the wire parts, we can render shell thickness of the shell parts from parts display options. Now I want to assign the defined section to the shell part. This is the sketch of the cross section of shell part. And as you can see, I have drawn the middle surface. So here from the shell offset, I must select middle surface and then we will have this part. The defined sketch is in the middle. As you can see, the defined sketch is in the middle. I go to Abacus to assign the section. I click on Assign Section. I select the whole part and I click on Done and I click on OK. I go to View, Part Display Options. This is the mid surface. I click on render shell thickness and I click on OK. And as you can see, this is similar to the cross section of the solid part. Now I want to talk about the effect of the definition of shell offset on the final configuration of the shell part. If I set it to top surface, the final configuration is like this. And as you can see, it is wrong because this length is not equal to this length but in the solid part they are the same and if i set it to bottom surface it is also wrong because this length is not equal to this length but if i set it to middle surface this length is equal to this length and it is correct because in the part module, I drawn the middle surface of the solid part for the shell part. The assigned sections overlap in the corner regions. As you can see, in the corners, the assigned sections overlap. This means that extra material is defined in these regions. Thus, the section has excessive stiffness. Hence, as the overlap area is small, a little error will be introduced to the simulation. For the sake of simplicity, usually the middle surface is created and used even in multibody simulations. Now, I want to talk about general procedures of defining shell part in Abacus. Actually, there are two general procedures to define shell part in Abacus. The first one is defining the part directly as a shell. In one of the previous tutorials, we used this process. And the second procedure is modeling the part as a solid, then extract its mid surface and use it for the rest of the modeling. Actually, in this procedure, we use the mid surface extraction tool that is very useful for industrial projects. If we use this procedure, in the section assignment, we must select from section. And if we use this procedure, in the section assignment, we must choose from geometry. Now I want to compare the cross sections of the shell part and solid part and the wire part. To compare the cross sections, I must create two other viewports. At present, we have only one viewport. I go to viewport, create, and I click on create for another time. And I click on tile vertically. Here, this is the I-beam shell. And here, it is the I-beam, the solid I-beam. And here it is the I-beam wire. And I go to view part display options and I deselect 
this option and I select this option. And as you can see, they are similar to each other. Throughout the following tutorials, I will discuss several mechanical behaviors presented in the property module and demonstrate how to define damage based on fracture mechanics and continuum damage mechanics. You can contact me by using Telegram or WhatsApp, or you can send email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk WhatsApp and we can make special tutorials to your order. We can conduct high quality simulations for your thesis, exercises and industrial projects. Now I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.